Um, I'm Christopher Busby. You've seen me before in the Baltic Sea Indigenous Court. Uh, and this is uh, the introduction to the Baltic Sea Indigenous Court number 10. Um, I'm not a judge in this particular court, but you will have seen me in previous videos uh, where I've considered judgment on a number of individuals associated with globalization <coughs> and particularly banking support of, of the development and use of nuclear weapons. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm involved in this issue, because I am, a, I am probably the expert on the, on the health effects of nuclear weapons or ionizing radiation from whatever source, the contamination by ionizing radiation of the, of the biosphere. So I'm going to say a few words now in a new role that I have, which is an ambassador to the to the League of Nations of the Baltic Sea Indigenous um, organizations in different countries, uh, not the, the 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 League of Baltic, the the League of Indigenous Nations. So the idea is that indigenous people or or people living in a particular country that have some right to believe that they ha that they own in a sense that country because they've lived there for a long time and their ancestors lived there and so on right the way back. These, these people have been brought under massive threat as a result of the, the globalization and general scrambling of people in the world that's occurred in the last 30, 40 years and is now increasingly occurring to the point where something is going to break soon. And the thing that's going to break is going to obviously involve nuclear war, because when when things in the in the world get to the point where there has to be some kind of dispute resolution, the way it's always happened in the past has been through war. Well, war now is not an option. And the reason it's not an option is because the nuclear weapons that there are available, and there's a huge number of these, not only in the hands of the main nations like the United States and and the Russian Republic, Russian Federation, um, many, many countries now have some kind of nuclear weapon. And we see in the last year increasing tension associated with the Middle East, uh, the use of, of some kind of uranium weapon in the Yemen by, by the Saudis. And very recently, of course, all the saber rattling that's occurring in North Korea. We have somebody in, uh, in charge of the United States now who is an unusual person, to put it mildly, and who, who might well be forced as a result of all the pressures that are occurring in the United States to do something unwise that would lead to someone else doing something unwise, and then an unraveling of all sorts of systems that would lead to a nuclear exchange. So the first thing I need to say to you is that if there is a nuclear exchange, even a limited one, the effects on the genet genetic the genetic composition of the human race will be further deteriorating to the point where there will be lo complete loss of fertility and, and huge increases in cancer and congenital malformations and her hereditary defects of one sort or another. So this, is, so something has to be done to try and stop this. And 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 whilst we may not be able to do it, at least. We owe it to ourselves and to our children and to posterity to try. Now, the, the, the one thing that we have seen that I'm going to talk about is that this process of the world moving rapidly to disaster for all is associated with or perhaps even caused by processes of forced migration or, if you like, um, a kind of mixing, a mixing of of peoples who who were living under their own specific tribal culture, if you like, or their or their indigenous culture, in various parts of the world, who who are being encouraged to leave those parts of the world and and turn up in other parts of the world to mix all the cultures up. Now, in my opinion, this is a strategy. This is a project of certain people, and these are the same people. That, that I was involved in, in, in judging in one of the early indige earlier indigenous courts. 
This is a very real, real process, and it's it, uh, and it it is at the it, it is fundamentally intended, in my opinion, to make it impossible for there to be any real uh, uh, opposition to this globalization. Because obviously, if you just mix people up all over the place, they they, they their cultures become diluted into the cultures of other people, other indigenous people. And the whole thing becomes a complete cultural mess where nobody really understands how it is that they got into these positions, but they all feel upset and unhappy, and they're all poor. And of course, it, th this is the object of the, of, of the game, if you like to see it like that. So what can be done about it? Well, actually, things can be done about it, in my opinion, which is why I'm sitting here with this crazy hat, you know, and, and involved in this whole project. Um, which is going to cause me a lot of trouble, I have to say. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of attacks for this, but I don't care too much about that because if it can help, if it can help stave off nuclear war, then any amount of attacks to me would be worth it. So one way in which in which we can do this is by um, encouraging people in the various countries where they consider that they have some level of ownership of the country because of all of the things I said they they consider themselves to be indigenous people they can they can mobilize a kind of right with a, a kind of human right which is actually in, interestingly encapsulated in the various re resolutions of human rights that are all out there but of course nobody next takes any notice of which are, which were intended originally to to, to um, protect uh, indigenous peoples um, in, uh, in, in, in South America, if you like, you know, people who lived in the jungle, who were like a little tribe, and, and, pe and, and of course, you know, it's okay for people to think, well, that's fine, you know, they should be left alone, so they can do all their tribal dancing, and they can be colourful, and we can sort of, you know, stop nasty people going in there and stealing all their, all their resources, you know, cutting down their trees and all that stuff, you know, all that anthropological stuff. But actually, if those people have human rights on the basis that they've lived in the jungle for a very long time and have a particular way of life, it's certainly easy to extend that definition to people who live in a particular country, for example, uh, Latvia, for example, the Baltic states, for example, Sweden, for example, even Wales, where I used to live, to protect them from people who steal they have and exploiting them in various ways. And the way in which they exploit them is easy, because what they do is they just introduce other cultures which mix in with the, these cultures and generally dilute their identity, their sense of identity. And the other thing that happens is that they come in with banks and they loan them loads of money and basically then when they can't pay the money back, they steal all their stuff. <clears throat> We've seen this happen all over the world. So behind all of this are the bankers, which is why the bankers figure very highly in the list of suspects in the Baltic Sea Indigenous Court, and I, I, I read out a whole, whole endless load of those people that were that were considered to be criminal, um, in in that they did these things to the indigenous people, as we now define them, indigenous peoples. Um, well, corporations and banks and so forth. Anyway, I won't go on too endlessly about that. The question is what to do about it. Well, what can be done about it is to go, is, is like all, all things, all, all clever things that, that, that there are, uh, uh, are, are associated not with fighting people directly, but with going around them. So if you need a, if you need a strategy or, or a way in which you can deal with these issues, in my opinion, it's pointless to, to try and oppose the people that you believe to be responsible for your troubles, because they are big and they're powerful and they have a lot of money and they can crush you. So what you do is you ignore them. This is the clever thing, you ignore them. You make up your own uh, councils and your own courts and your own money. And this is, where, this is where we come in here now because that's what I'm going to talk about. Because if you can set up an, an, an alternative financial system where you, and money after all is only a method of exchange and, and various sort of uh, green parties and, and thinkers over the world have figured out ways in which we can deal with money. By, by, by creating your own money. So the, pro the project here, and this is why I'm now here, because I'm now no longer a judge, but I'm 
now the ambassador of the Baltic Sea Indigenous Court to the League of Indigenous Nations, which is something which we want to develop. We want a League of Indigenous Nations, just like there was a League of Nations in the 1930s to, to try and prevent another war, like the First World War. Well, it didn't do that, of course, because it didn't work, because it was under the control even then of the bankers. So we want to set up a League of Nations of Indigenous people from different countries. And this League of Nations of Indigenous People, I shall be the ambassador from the Baltic Sea Indigenous Court to this, and other people, you know, other Indigenous nations can have their own um, their own ambassadors, and then we can meet together and try and find a way forward. But the important way forward is to develop a different method, method of exchange and, and uh, a method of enabling people to live without having to, to work for the corporations. And there is a method. Um, and uh, you will be told about it um, later on. It's, it's effectively it's a fiat currency which can be created and exchanged, and will have as much power as any other currency. Because it will have more power because it will have real value. Well, it only has power that people will will give it. So, in other words, you have to believe in it, and you have to believe in this. And so that's where we have to start. Because if you don't believe in this, you're going to be crushed. And as part of that project, by what you might call evil people, but my own feeling is that they're not evil people. They've just, it's just been a sort of... Trapped. Everybody's trapped. It's a sort of mathematical inevitability of the system of, of exchange, which is sort of built up, which, which was originally called capitalism, but you, what you like to call it now is market forces or whatever. They're all sorts of neoliberalism, whatnot. Whatever it is, it may as well be as if it was controlled by evil people. It may as well be. And so if we don't do something about it, we are all going to be destroyed because it's inevitably, inevitably going to lead to a nuclear war. And the reason for this is that there are not enough resources to go around. There's too much pollution. There's just too much scrambling on each other's shoulders using this kind of system. And eventually something will have to break. And in, in any system, in any system, where there are so many nuclear weapons that when it does break, the weapons will start to be used. And, it's, and if it's not bad enough now, with, with the decrease in fertility and the increase in cancer and all the other horrifying things that are occurring now, what will happen after that will be like something out of Mad Max. So there we are. That's all I have to say about this. And I hope you will climb on board this crazy project because it's all we have. Yeah, it's all we have left now. It's our indigenous power. I, I I must say that I don't, for many, I don't really believe in nationalism, and I don't, and I and I haven't really ever believed in 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 this idea that indigenous people somehow own the land that they own, that that they live in. But on the other hand, in they certainly own it more than people who come in from the outside and take it from them. That's exactly the right? point. That's, That's the point. point. That's so it, the point. It's not, it's not an absolute, absolute thing. thing. We're not yeah, saying, saying that people who live in Riga own Riga, but we are saying that they own it more than people who come from China. We have more right to manage it. That's right. Than the occupying forces. Yes. And this is an old Green Party principle of, 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 of taking the decision making down to the smallest level that's, that's possible. And this is not happening. What happens now is the decision making is up there by a load of people who may as well be evil. Thank who you. Who are visibly evil and they are right now executing Third World War upon us. Okay. Well, so if this ring has any power, let it be. <laughs> yeah, let it be so. Thanks All right, so much. I have to say, thank you very much and, and, and good luck. Right, there we are.